Okay, welcome back. Um, we just covered how to build this with our P flow system. This is what it looks like so far. Let's get this column built out properly. And placement of these is uh, not so important to me of what you do, whatever uh, is best organized for you. We're going to, uh, we have a lot, a lot of like little offshoots and stuff like that for this one, so we're gonna try to keep, keep it kind of neat. So anyway, this is what we're looking at so far. This is hitting our plane and then automatically dripping down. Okay, so now when each uh, raindrop hits our geometry, I want it to kick out a little splatter. So I'm going to change our rate to 20. Let's change it even to 10. And I encourage you, if you don't have like a good uh, a good amount of RAM on your computer, or you're just it's not a good processor. To whenever you make changes inside PFLOW is to set your timer back to zero. Because if you make a big change um, in the middle of the flow and then update it, it could be a big trouble. So right now my rate is 10. What if I put it to 100? Or 1,000 even. This is taking a while to update. Now, I have a really good computer. Um, pretty good anyway. But if you have... Uh, a shitty computer that could have been like a suicidal move so let's go down to 10 and again when you update just go to zero to do it because your uh, computer doesn't have to calculate anything with pflow also if during this uh, tutorial or series of tutorials at all you ever kinda like your system doesn't seem to be doing what I'm doing like you think you might have missed a step first you want to go to uh, before you change anything go back to your cache and clear it watch these numbers as I clear it goes back to zero to start over then it recaches up till frame 40 in this case because that was the frame I was sitting on okay good so right when the particle collides with our, our uh, geo that's our collision here and it goes to our drip guide event let's add a We want it to spawn from there also, not just our guiding particles, which are these orange guys here that turn off the tail or the trails, just these guys. Other than that, we want to spawn more. So let's go to uh, spawn, duh, 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 alphabetical. Let's put that right at the top, spawn. And let's drag this guy out to the other side. Offspring, let's set it to a five for now, just to keep it light. Okay, as it spawns, let's uh, let's open our or open a unhide this, and let's put a speed by surface. I know you're here. There you are. Speed by surface, and link that. And there's another good time to go back to zero. Um, add the surface so we see now that the particles are hitting it I'm gonna update see these little green guys that's kinda what we're looking for so speed by surface if we vary that we can uh, and diverge that, let's go 32. We can see that wherever a raindrop hits now, it's spawning not only a particle guide particle, which is the circle orange, and the trail orange, which is just uh, uh, spawned by travel distance, but now we're kicking out extra uh, particles or splatter particles. Bang, bang, bang. 
Okay, that's looking... Well, it's looking like it's on its way. So let's see which one of these gravities we can use to pull it. So this has the strength of one. That's kind of what we're looking for. We don't want this guy. A strength of uh, almost uh, nine, or a little over nine. So let's add a force. And let's select our slower speed guy here, which is, of course, our initial fall. And now when the particles come out, they have a gravity to them, which is good. I'm going to uh, turn up the density, or how many particles that's spawning for a bit. I'm going to say 50, a variation of 50. Let's see what that looks like. So now it's kind of like a sparks being shot off, or like a ricochet bullet, whatever it may be. I'm going to lower this still because I don't want them to shoot out that far. Let's set that to zero for just a second. I kind of want to get about that far. So let's put the variation of 23, um, 38, let's see. Divergence. Spawn. Okay. Let's turn the speed up a little bit. In terms of the divergence. Because even if you set it to 90, that just means it would move in a hemisphere out from the normal in which it hits. And um, we're actually going to keep this simple. What you could do now is make these particles collide again with your object. And each one of those either sticks or forms their own trail. We're going to keep it simple and just kill it off after a certain time. So let's say particle age, and let's say a four, a variation of three. Let's say two is the variation, and three is the life, new seed. Bang, bang, bang. So it's like little hits, which is kind of fair. Um, I, uh, you'll notice throughout the tutorials, I'll jump between real time and then, uh, you know, not real time. I always like to turn on real time and kind of get an idea of the speed of these things actually. And if that looks like they're still falling a little too fast, you could diminish the force 500. Uh, now that's kind of like the wind we have selected being at 0.5. Let's say 250, cut that in half again. So now we like our wind being at 0.25. And when it's like that, they're not really falling all that much. So let's go back to 500. Let's see what it looks like. We could probably make them live a little longer. Mm, delete. So let's say four by three. Okay, well, um, I actually like that look. It's not a, it's not the realest thing, but I like that look. They still shoot out a little far, or just be like a windshield hit, or you know whatever it might be. But let's stick with it for now. It's okay. Now we're gonna create a separate altogether kind of guy that's gonna grow right on side of our our, uh, our uh, object. So let's spawn that, and let's uh, let's add another spawn. 
this is all, uh, I haven't tried this one yet, so we're just going to freestyle it like we've been doing. And if you go to render this stuff, you might break it up for uh, renders. So like these, the big uh, shooting out splatters might be a separate uh, pass or a separate altogether render. Whereas the, uh, the orange drip guys may be one thing. That's a 100 again. See now the green splashes are becoming a little distracting. How do we deal with that? Well, we can cut that down to let's say 21. That'll give us less, and then we can turn down the speed again. So let's say uh, 35 by 28. Now it's starting to come together pretty good. Looks like our drips might be moving a bit fast still. You know what I guess we could do? Because even the rain is falling fast. Just a, and again, this is a scale issue. You know, if your rain is out real far away, you want it at that gravity. In this case, I don't really want it at that gravity. So 0.5. But now we have to go into this force and make this a full thousand because now technically we'd be at 0.25. So let's see what that looks like. Still a bit fast, lock bond. Nineteen-ish. But now we'd have to increase the life of how long the particles live. The age test, 25, 15. And now because they're moving so slow, we have to change the turbulence a bit. So let's say. About three late twos. It's still a little wavy. Let's go straight to. And again, this is all up to the artist. Whatever you guys would prefer. Moving a little too slow. But anyway, yeah, so you can think around with this stuff all day. I'm going to move mine a little faster here. Uh, 25 for my speed limit. My speed unit, sorry. And that's, uh, I'm going to leave it like that for now. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this guy up so they have a little bit more to travel before they actually get there. If you can see, I keep jumping to frame 100 because what that does is it forces my cache to cache all the way. And I'm going to again turn my extra splatters on. I'm going to re cache it. Play that. Good, now it's looking pretty good. It's coming along. Good. So, um,. Okay, yeah, so we were going to add another spawn. Let's still do that. Spawn. Um, above or below. I don't think it's going to matter in this case, although it may. And if it does, though, we'll just switch it up. Spawn, let's call it, let's put a position. Let's put a position object in there. Uh, and let's not forget to rename... Ladder. and rename we'll call 
this. Uh, I don't know. Still drips, I guess. Still drops. Drops. So go inside of your position object. Let's grab this guy. make this guy a color that we're not used to seeing so I think that's gonna be these ticks here these light green guys let's make a oh, let's go back to red because we don't have any reds so hard so hard to see let's make it a yellow a bright perfect yellow let's change the shape to circles so these are gonna be Our, uh, our little, uh, our little uh, dots of water that don't run down. They just kind of hit. They create a hemisphere, you know, like a little water droplet, and then we'll have them uh, scale down, animate, and scale down till they disappear. So let's add a age test again. And normally I would make another whole event, like another whole, uh, another source to drive this. But in this case, we can do it this way. Uh, the only downside is that it's governed by how many particles we actually start in the beginning here. So anyway, age test. Um, let's say at the 10th frame of those we will move on to a scale operator scale let's set up the scale so let's say 10 frames on the 10th frame and on your keyboard is shortcut for a uh, auto key or it can be found here auto key and scale you want to just animate these to zero so zero zero change that seed and let's start adding a little bit of geometry to these things so we can see what these parts are actually doing so I can turn this off turn this off because we don't we don't need to focus on those just yet turn that off and let's uh, change this to geo and then we'll add some geo welcome everyone to another ex sorry about that my last video finished uh, going through the Produce procedure inside of uh, Camtasia. It just pops in the video after that. It's very cool. Not disturbing at all. Anyway, so let's just change this to geometry. We're going to get these little X's. That means that uh, it's reading from nothing. There's no geometry to read from. So let's put a, um, a shape in there. Shape. SH shape put it right below position now we see cubes are the default so let's drag our scale in uh, no we don't want to do that leave it where it is and connect these guys so at age 10 of the particle age we can switch that probably to event age I think Just disappearing. Okay, we got some work to do. So overwrite once. We want an absolute, and change it to event age again. That's still not working. Three cube. Let's change that to twenty side sphere. Age test scale. Scale is at zero. age 
Oh, there we go. Geometry, there we go. Okay, good. So we weren't lost. We just forgot to change that to geo. So obviously I don't want them that big. And again, uh, the shape carried through to this event because it's in the parent event. That's true for all of PFLOW, unless you otherwise designate it. So for example, if we're going to put a material, like a, a water material or something like that, on all of the events, we put it right in the uh, source node here. And we carry through with a material static. Okay, so let's change... We want the drafts to be little, little guys. Let's uh, let's turn on the other guys. And we might as well add size and shape to all these guys. Okay, so rain I'm going to leave at lines because it'll look more like rain. Let's change this. Change everything to geometry other than your initial uh, rain spawn event there. Geometry... Geometry. Okay, good. So, we're going to turn this guy off. The reason we're going to turn him off is because he's the drip guide. We don't actually need to see him. So, I'm going to turn him off. I am, however, going to put shapes, or shape, uh, yeah, there's shapes, but I want to call them shape instance, and in each one of these guys. So spawn once for splatter, that's going to be our splatter hits, so we now see our splatter is like that. And uh, let's see how long our splatter is going to live. Our splatter lives for up to seven or as low as one. So let's put a scale in there. Let's drag out another scale. At frame seven, we want to animate everything down to zero percent size. Uh, absolute. Let's drag that below force and above delete. So the splatter went away. It's because we need to switch that to event duration. And now as they spawn, they're 100%. And right before they die, they should be at zero or about zero. And we're still getting the uh, the other, these guys here. Um, the still drops. Oops, undo that. Make sure to un, uh, turn off your auto key. Let's change that to 10. Let's see what that looks like. So it's very drippy looking. Uh, I'm going to cache it. So that's kind of what it looks like right now. Also, we're going to uh, add, before we finish this section up, uh, we're at 24 minutes and 43 seconds. Let's finish up with adding Geo to uh, the rest of the components here. So I'm going to turn off or still drops. Bang and bang. Also going to turn off our drips or our splatter. I'm going to focus on our drips for now. Okay, so in the. I'm going to leave him turned off. So really, we just need it in the trails portion. So let's put a shape in there also. 
shape. Same one, just hold shift and drag that. Copy. Let's see what that looks like. So now we're getting shapes out of it. Um, the life is five. We can set that to 10, seven. It'll live longer, but that's a total of 17 or as little as three. So again, we know that math, we can drop the scale in, scale, 17. zero um, underneath shape but above delete absolute event duration let's see what we got good so as they age now they slender out and taper out uh, over time and that's kind of what we've been looking for I'm going to uh, change this guy to a rectangle. And on my top viewport, I'm going to expand him to cover more of that. We might uh, change that again later. But for now, I'm going to like it like that. Cash that. I'm stuttering a bit, maybe. Why is that? Hmm. I guess it's because I'm recording. Anyway, cool. This is starting to come along, right? So there's a. In the next video, we will do um, I think we'll finish it up with the actual drips making it to the bottom and then they fall off of there and collide with the ground. I think we have all the geo covered. Let me turn everything else back on. There's a trouble area here. Um, that's usually when your gravity is too high. It pulls it off of there and Max has trouble um, solving once it gets so high, like a ridiculous number to it. It'll just pull it off because really it's like a lock bond. So it shouldn't be leaving there, but it is. Uh, we'll look at that also later. It'll probably solve itself somewhere along the way and if it doesn't, we'll force it. Okay, but for now, this is kind of what we have, and it's, it's looking good. Just don't look at this part, because that part doesn't look good. That's a... Now it's looking really good. Okay, good. Um, it might actually seem like a lot of stuff happening, but if you rendered this out, it would still look pretty, pretty plain. Well, anyway, so um, the next lesson, we'll look to finish this up. Um, I'm going to record it right after this, so I'll be right back. You may not be. Later.